but growing up in California, I, I joined, a, I was in this band in my early 20s, and you know, we toured around the country and everything for a long time, and I, I'd promised my grandparents and my mom, who were supporting me in this whole process, like, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to go back to school, I promise, and I'm going to get I'm gonna get a degree. And when that band broke up, I went through with my promise, and I was looking for the easiest way possible and quickest thing to get out of college with. And I went to Sac State, Sacramento State University in California, and I, for some reason, chose economics. Um, let that sit in for a second. Terrible choice. <laughs> uh, I r- highly recommend never letting somebody do that. Um, it was a living nightmare. It was really, really hard. It sucked the whole time. But somehow, I did really well, and I got offered this job right out of college working for the state of California at the Capitol as a financial advisor. And for some reason, California was going to trust me with their money. I don't trust me with my money. Um, and you know everything looked great about the job. It was a great you know paycheck, and I had benefits, and insurance for the first time. My, everything was crazy, and you know my parents were really happy. And but I had promised myself when I graduated college that I was going to move down to LA and try to be a solo artist. And I'd made that promise to myself. And so I looked at that paycheck, which I've never had anything that even looked like that before. <laughs> I was uh, I politely turned it down, and. You, I moved down to LA, and uh, Sally Mae still calls me, you know. But we're working with we're working on that. <laughs> but uh, I got down there and started. I met a couple producers, you know. And we started writing just every day, all day, all night, and we wrote about you know 20, 30 songs, and we picked our favorite one. It was this song called Radio, and it was this you know independent release country ballad, and I put it out. And it got, started getting enough streams and enough views and comments and everything on these different outlets online that made me feel like it was at least trending enough for me to go back to my hometown and play a show. I was like, guys, I bet it's going to be packed. Let's go. It's going to be awesome. I, come on. I feel it. And so I get up there, and it's kind of like this. I'm sitting on a stool, sitting on a stage, and there's probably about 15 diehard family members there total. Um, <laughs> uh, they all keep coming back, though, so it's awesome. Um, but the best thing about that show is that one of the Sacramento radio programmers was there. And he came up to me afterwards. He's like, man, I love your voice. I love your single. I love your show. He's, I think you've got a shot at this. I want to I wanna play you on the radio. And so I was expecting, you know, one spin or two spins here and there or whatnot. And uh, after about a week, he put it into full rotation. And flash forward a month later, it is the number three most requested song in Sacramento. So then I'm like, all right, guys, now we got to go back and play a show. <laughs> and... We went back up there, and we headlined this time, and we sold it out two nights in a row. And it was just this crazy moment of, like, this huge testament of what the power of radio really can do for a brand-new artist. And so then all of a sudden, this organic, just wonderful thing starts happening in California and in Oregon and on the West Coast. Of It, it kind of spread, starts to spread a little bit, and I start playing shows other places, and the tickets start selling more, and... Uh, my social media starts blowing up a little bit, and then all of a sudden I get this email, and it's from L3 Entertainment, and they're like, hey, dude, we manage Justin Moore, we manage Dustin Lynch, and we would love to meet with you if you ever want to come from L.A. out to Nashville. So that's kind of all I needed to hear. You know, like a day later, I'm on a jet going straight out to Nashville for the first time ever, and um, I get out there, and it's I went alone, you know, for four days, but it was St. Patty's Day weekend, so... I was never really alone. There's, you know, fake Irish hammered people everywhere. <laughs> um, made lots of new friends that weekend. But at this meeting, you know, Dustin Lynch comes in and with the most, like, professional voice you've ever heard, Tyler Rich, what's up? Dustin Lynch, big fan. And <laughs> I'm like, hey, what's up, dude? How's it going, brother? Nice to meet you, man. <laughs> I was, like, so nervous. I was like, what's going on? And um, so what had happened is before Mind Reader, uh, his hit, before it was ever even a single, it was just my favorite song on the CD, and so I did a 15-second cover on Instagram, and I hashtagged him, and he saw it. And so he had been just kind of keeping tabs on me for about four months, and I didn't know. And he's like, dude, we, l- we love what you're doing out there in California, but we think you've maximized your West Coast potential. You need to move to Nashville, and you need to move to Nashville now. So once again, it's all I needed to hear. And I uh, went home. I told my, my husky, Abby, I was like, you got four weeks to pack. And uh, <laughs> she wasn't thrilled about the 40-hour car ride across the country, but um, – I had convinced my best friend from Sacramento to come down to L.A., help me pack, and move to Nashville. I don't know how. That's a long journey. And, but there was only one stipulation, is that once we hit the road, we had to make it to Nashville by Cinco de Mayo so that we could party when we got there. <laughs> a 
Okay, well, packing in L.A. took a little bit longer than expected, so we left Friday night at 5 p.m., and we drove straight. We didn't sleep. We got to Nashville at 5-something p.m., whatever, and uh, on Sunday, and we left Friday night, got there Sunday afternoon, and just as planned, we showed up, had a bunch of margaritas, partied, and slept on a mattress on the floor. <laughs> but uh, here we are coming up next week is my three-year anniversary of moving to Nashville, and it's just insane everything that's happened in these three years. Dustin Lynch took me out on the hell of a night tour. It was five months long. It was full U.S. And between him and my buddy John Party and a bunch of other people that have just really opened a lot of doors for me, I've just you know, I've been sitting in Music City writing songs for three years and going out and playing shows, and it's been incredible. And about a year ago, I met the, uh, the wonderful Scott Bruschetta, and thank God we hit it off right away. He was a big fan, and he signed me really quick, and we've just been kind of molding this whole project the last year. And it's all led to this beautiful thing of me on this radio tour promoting this first single. And the single came out last month, and the music video is already out. I want you guys to watch it because I need, when you guys see this in sync Backstreet Boy esque rain that's happening in this music video, I need you to know we didn't pay for it. <laughs> that it, it was this torrential, miserable downpour outside. And my fiance, Sabina, is in the video, and my husky, Abby, is in it. And had her for 13 years, you know, she's she's literally like my kid, and Sabina's little bougie Maltese poodle Charlie is in it, and it's just this, you know, cute three-minute snapshot of, you know, my life with her and those dogs. 